One for the comfy UI nerds this week as I show you a few ways you can poke at your workflows to make them bend to your will. Do you like taking things apart, breaking them and trying to put the bits back together again? Me too. Being a comfy UI nerd, you'll already be fine using comfy UI, so we can get straight to business. The setup I've got here is using Flux, but the tricks I'll be showing you today will work on any workflow, so you can do the same thing for SDXL or whatever. You'll see why with the first example. This one is a little trick for floating point numbers, which you might have noticed a lot of in Comfy UI. The thing is, sometimes a floating point number widget doesn't allow certain values. For example, this node has a widget for scale. It's a fairly sensitive setting, but if I try to change it, say from 1.70, up to 1.7111 and it looks like it's changed but if I click back on it again oh it's it's gone back to 1.71 that's not the value I wanted now often it's only the interface doing the rounding as when you click on it again you can see the true value but that might also be rounded so if you go into settings you can search for settings here float disable float rounding this has also got a little information thing there cannot disable round when round is set by the node in the background, but we'll turn that on and see what difference it makes. Now, when I go back to set the scale, I can click on that. We can put in the big long value. And then when I click on it again, it's still there. Excellent. Okay, so now we can put longer floating point values in. Fantastic, but what about the cases like they mentioned in that little info box? Are, are we doomed to live in a world of rounding? No, because if you do find a node working like that, Here's a simple trick to change it without any coding. One such node is your typical case sampler. Try to change the value for CFG to something like, oh, I don't know, 8.66666. There we go. It's rounded up to 8.7. If we look back in there, oh, it's, it's 8.67. So it hasn't got quite as many decimal places. Yes, off to your room, you're rounded, young man. This is where you can use something like a float constant. So let's search for that float constant. It's up there at the top. Now, the one I quite like is this one here from KJ Nodes. We'll pop that in. And now we've got three decimal places. So all we have to do is change that CFG. So change widget to input, change CFG to input, connect that up. There you go, value. And now I can put 8.11, whatever. There we go and it's much, much longer. So there we go. We've now got lots more decimal places for the CFG value. And of course you can do that with any floating point number. Section two, debugging outputs. And no, I'm not talking about if you've got ants in your pants. This is nerd stuff here. Say you've got a new node and you've no idea what it outputs like. Oh, I don't know this Laplace scheduler. There we go. We've popped that in there. Excellent. All right, so we could use that instead of the basic one. Let, let's just plug it in and see what it outputs then. Oh, that's a bit rubbish, you may think, and calmly toss the node into the I'm never going to use that one pile. Of course, a node bent on workflow destruction would never do that. The first thing to do is take it apart in the most lazy way possible. I'm not about to take somebody else's word for how this is meant to work, nor am I going to do any coding. I've got my expectations set to unrealistic, and things should hopefully only go downhill from here. The first question then, why image bad? Why, why is the output from this so much different to when I just used the basic and all those other settings? What's going on? Good, you're thinking like a nerd. Let's take a look-see and find out. The first thing you need is a nice debug node. So you could pop in here, you go over to debug, and there's one here from Waz Extras, which is quite good. That will connect up to anything, so you could say, connect your high sigmas to that, but it outputs to the console, so it's a little bit annoying. Instead of that one, the one I like using is called Two Text Debug from Durfu Comfy UI Modded Nodes. That one looks much the same, but of course this time when you connect it and run it, it will just go through and oh, I've got, I've got the numbers there. I don't have to go back to the console, making it much easier to use. With our debug nodes in place here, we've got a very simple connection, so I've just got the basic scheduler down there. So this is the one that works and this is the one that didn't work and just gave us that funny image. So how do all these values differ? Well, we can run that through and find out. There we go. Oh, all right. Well, that's quite obvious there. Look, tensor 14 and it goes all the way down to 0 0.02. And this one starts at tensor one and it goes down in a much smoother progression. So this is obviously starting much too high. What I need there is a sigma max of one, that's better, and a sigma min of zero. 
There we go. Okay, so that's fixed part of it. Let's run that through again. Oh, all right, so these are all still one. That's a lot better. That's closer to these numbers, but this, this top lot isn't working here, is it? Okay, maybe if we change this. What about if we go up a little bit there? No, that's that's not seem to have done anything. How about if we go back a little bit? We go the other, oh, there we go. There we go. Okay, so that's working a little bit better. So now we can see that's going down and how can I change this one? There we go. So now you can see how the numbers change for each scheduler. So essentially what you want to do is try and make those numbers match those ones, which is basically what I've got set up there already. So now this is a schedule which is different, but it's a little bit more customizable because you can change the mu and beta values. And these look almost sane. I mean, 0 0.9 to down to 0 0.7 is a little bit of a drop compared to 0 0.9 down to 0 0.98. But well, let's just plug it in and see what happens, shall we? Okay, now we've got something that isn't a mess, which is progress. And along the way, we also learned that a schedule is essentially just a sequence of numbers, which will come in handy later too. As that debug node takes any input, you can connect anything to it. However, as it only displays text, it will only be useful in some cases, not all of them. So for example, you could go over here and let's take this debug text, copy it down here. If we copy it to the empty latent, what's that look like? Oh, okay. So an empty latent is just a load of zeros or the conditioning. What does the conditioning look like? There we go. Oh, also a bunch of numbers and that's, that's a lot longer. So ooh, we can do maths on that. On to section three then. So far we've made sure that we have lots of control over our floats and we've taken a scheduler apart to learn that it's just a sequence of numbers. But can we put all these pieces back together again? Well, yes, sure we can with a custom scheduler. There are a bunch of them out there, but the one I'm using in this example is simply called custom scheduler. Thanks to taking schedulers apart already, we now have a better understanding of what these values should be. So the first sigma there, we're just going to set to one. And however many steps there are, the last one should always be zero. We're going to have eight steps in this case. As for the numbers in between, sigmas one through to seven, well, we know what those are. We can just copy these values into there. And you'll effectively have the beta scheduler that you can now modify. Why would we want to make a custom scheduler other than for fun? Well, last week we saw that using the combination of an anti-blur LoRa DPM++ 2M, the beta scheduler, and a split sigma sampler with scaled noise would greatly reduce the number of line artifacts, all without the typical color issues of that sampler scheduler combination. As a bonus, we also got improved prompt adherence too. These examples also quickly summarize what you typically see. So the prompt is the same there, woman wearing a white t-shirt, which says 100% average on it. Now DEIS simple is pretty good. We can have a little zoom in here. Now it's all right, but you know, the, the eyes are a little bit grainy. So that's, that's interesting. And if we go down to the same one, DEIS beta, then we've got all those horrible artifacts, the squares and lines that you sometimes see on them. Over on DPM++ 2M, also a very nice image, but if you zoom in a little bit more, then of course you've got that grainy thing going on there. If we zoom into this one, this is DPM++ 2M beta, and it's nice, we saw last time, but it's, it's smooth and all those colors are a bit overblown. So we've got a problem there because we've got some which give detail, some which give better colors and some which are smoother. So this is where the custom scheduler can come in because that's pretty much all we've changed there. We've got simple and beta. We can make our own up now though. Using the eight step hyperlora is great because we're not going above eight steps. Making your own 20 step custom scheduler is certainly a thing you can do, but that's too nerdy even for me. What I did to start off with, as mentioned, was just copy those values from the beta scheduler because I know those work and then play around with them. I've been taking lots of notes. So as I change that value, what happens to the image? If I do this, what happens? So that way you can say, oh, what changes the color? What brings in more boxes? What gives me less boxes? How does all this work? 
I've got a bunch of custom values here that show the sorts of things to expect. Like it says in my notes there, think more about differences between values than absolute ones. If you set two values the same, typically you're going to get a black image, so there has to be some sort of difference between the two. Now, say I set sigma 5, that one down there, to a really low value, 0.33 in this case. That's very much lower than the one above it, 0.77. What changes does that make? Well, I've got it plugged in. So let's find out. This is what we get as the output from that change. And as you can see, it's absolutely terrible. We've got loads of lines going on there. I can zoom in a bit and her skin's pretty bad as well. So what that tells you is don't go that low on that number. Excellent. We learned another thing. OK, so if 0.33 is bad, how about if I turn it up? If I put that to 0.71, will that make anything better? And the answer is, yes, it does. There we go. We've got rid of those stripes and uh, there's a nice bit of text on there. We've got a red 100% average. Yeah, the stripes have gone. The, the whole thing is much, much better. Switching over to a more anime cartoon style as another example, you may wish to have things a little smoother like you get with the typical DPM beta combo. So let's zoom in down on this one. So DPM plus plus 2M beta very, very smooth, as we've seen previously. Great for getting good, rid of stripes and stuff. Not so great on the detail, but that's that's quite good for cartoons. I quite like that on cartoons. So we've got the other ones up there, as we saw. Those get a little bit more detail. Now, interesting, one of the best ones here, DEI Simple, is the only one that's put the nerdy rodent on the belt, even though her eye is a little bit strange. Now, the actual thing we're asking for over here is this very big prompt so it's an anime art style thing with and you know all sorts of details in there but we go to our custom sampler one which i think is best and one of the things this has that all the other ones doesn't have is her expression so i asked for her eyes to be closed and that's the only one where she's got the eyes closed so she's sort of in a meditative trance there thinking things through whereas all these other ones have open eyes Back to photos, and once again, we can hopefully see the improved image and text quality with our custom sampler we just made up. Now, here I'm asking for an ultimate mega cake text in a glittering neon banner, and uh, center stage, there should be uh, a really bad cake and some sparklers and lots of people thinking it's absolutely amazing. Here is a quick summary of the results then. I think, yes, you can easily tell the ultimate mega cake. That's the only one that has got the proper neon letters. I mean, this is quite good, the ultimate mega cake, but it's not really neon. It's just sort of white and it being uh, the beta scheduler, it, it's far too smooth. I like the things with more details, but then it doesn't get the text and, and then that looks all weird as well. So once again, I think our custom scheduler has done really very well. So there you have it. Using this exact combination of nodes and values, not only can you reduce the number of artifacts in your generations, but you can also gain control of color and composition with the added benefit that it also follows your prompts a lot better. Using a float constant can help overcome limitations on some widgets, and using a debug node to view output may help you understand what's going on at any stage in your workflow. Ooh, nerdy rodent. He really makes my day, showing us AI in a really British way.